Okay. Yes. That's oh, Ryan who Ryan. actually made the movie that you just watched awesome. of our show. Okay. I loved that uh, website slash kind of compilation. Oh, it, thanks a lot. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah. Transfixed by that. I watched the whole thing. Um, so, okay. Well, let, let's start with what's going on right now. I mean, this is fantastic. So you're in Washington, D.C. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we thought it's January 6th. We should go to Washington, D.C. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Who, who wouldn't right now, right? Yeah. Uh, so, but you're doing a show. This is a unique show for you. It's for MAGFest, and it will be streaming. And uh, so tell us about that. How did you connect with MAGFest? <laughs> if, if that's... Oh, it's yours, Mark. Well, we, we, have, we have one of the uh, festival organizers and curators to thank, a guy named Rob Carvalho, who's been delightful to work with. And uh, he's just a been a enjoyed our work for many many years and we'd spoken to him i think pre-covid about doing something with magfest and then of course everything all went to went to hell and continues to keep going in and out of going to hell right now but uh, magfest was all didn't happen for two years it's back on and we revived our conversation about uh, performing again and we proposed the idea that be given what this festival is the music and gaming fest and what it focuses on with uh you know all kinds of gaming stuff and all kinds of chiptune stuff and um that we would do a special brand new custom created negative land slash sue c show that is all about gaming game theory john phil fill us in on more of the the themes and topics <laughs> <laughs> one of the main voices uh the last record, The World Will Decide, had as one of its main themes, gamification. If the larger theme of the record is about what social media has done to all of us, one of the recurrent voices was that we sampled was from this book called Reality is Broken by Jane McGonigal, which uh, is sort of a master thesis on gamification and how all of the uh, people under 40 who are spending more and more of all of their available free time gaming are in fact not wasting their lives, but learning how to live in the current reality scenario, learning how to live in social media. And so uh, her book in 2010 sort of led the charge for gamification of reality, gamification of all apps, make your uh, Fitbit into a video game with conceivable metrics that will make things that are normally unfun, like learning how to salsa, learning how to exercise, learning how to invest in the stock market, all of these things are apps which can be constructed to look more like games, which will then make all of these things more fun. And uh, yeah. Jane would be the first person to tell you that Silicon Valley took that a little bit too far, <laughs> and that the concept of gamification has basically turned right over into straight up addiction. But uh, all of those themes were on the last record, and this was an opportunity to go even further with it and talk about in-game currency and how uh, crypto and uh, NFTs are nothing new to anybody under 30 who grew up playing Habbo Hotel and Roblox and Minecraft and Animal Crossing. And um, that's what the metaverse is. Gaming community sort of pioneered all of this dematerialization of wealth. And... Um, so tonight's set also taking advantage of the fact that it's basically the one year anniversary of the insurrection in the Capitol. Yeah, it's 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 all a very negative land thing to do, seemingly that we're, we're going along with an hour long set about all of that. Yes. And somehow tying in this idea of gamification and what happened a year ago in, in our nation's capital. What are we trying to say? What are we trying to what say? What are we trying to say with this show? Do we think that this is just a great, wonderful, that Jane McGonagall's ideas are just the best thing ever? Well, I, I, you know, I, I guess don't know about that. Sue and Mark noticed, like, are, is everybody going to think that we think gaming caused this? And certainly, no, no. But it's more sort of that there is a theme. It's that none of this should, should be, is surprising to anybody under 30. It's just the people over 45 who grew up on the other side like of, me. of video gaming. <laughs> and, well, uh, it, yeah. But I think, I think though, in, an, in a sort of a more artful way, it's just the influence of gaming and, and just the culture, the thinking, the framing, the narratives. It, it has permeated our culture in all kinds of interesting ways, strange ways, funny ways, frightening ways. And 
you know, it's sort of, it's just kind of in so many of the Americans' bloodstream in some way or another that as a, as a, as a sort of a sandbox for negative land to play in thematically, does that make sense? I think there's ways for us to kind of tease out all kinds of things in our negative landy sort of way. That being said, it's also allowing Sue is, and, and Ryan's been contributing to this as well, uh, visual elements that are real different than things we've worked with before to bring into the show. So as we're, we're talking to you now, the reason Sue's not here is she has a recording of the rehearsal from yesterday that she's just rehearsing with in her room, trying to work out, dial in more carefully what she wants to do visually in for each section. Because this show's just, we've just been rehearsing this just, you know, just for a matter of days, pulling yeah. it together. But That's we're very excited about it, actually, enough to the point where I think that this show's promised to become another show. The show that you saw that uh, Ryan made the film out of, it's normal for some things to come to your attention. Right. We want to keep performing that. And we do hope the film is also a way for people to both enjoy the show if they can't come, but we hope it's a way for us to get more shows. But I think this is going to, this thing we're doing today, I think it's going to turn into another, you know, another full on negative land show that we'll have in our back pocket. Or we can come back to a city we've already played in and done the It's Normal show and we can do this one. So that's that's pretty, for us, that's way more together than we normally ever have been in our entire history. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, we're in a surprisingly, we're a very strange moment now where many different energies and forces and talents and interests are all coalescing where the group has more, it's more, it's like the least dysfunctional I've ever seen it. <laughs> so <laughs> well, it's the, pretty wonderful. Yeah, and so just very good energy. And so I feel like we're riding a, a pretty neat little wave right now over the next few years, you know, of stuff that we are building on what we've been doing the last few years. So that's well, that's a beautiful uh, um, description of what's happening uh, and uh, for this show. And I love that it's essentially going to go into the set list, as it were. You know, um, it's amazing because uh, uh, Wobbly, what you said, what you both said about gamification wow my mind's blown i've seen that word in the corner of my eye like i read wired and i've but i i you really explained better than anything really what it is with those examples and that makes sense you know uh, essentially tricking a generation into financial knowledge or exercising or something um you know what though i i will say i think i think i think your group was ready for this you talk about people over 30 because this is kind of the world you've talked about you and zappa and national lampoon and robert williams and gil scott heron <laughs> and, you know all these people add add busters magazine jaron lanier you put all that up t together and here we are right it's kind of it, you know what, what do, do you sometimes pause and say oh my god you know we, we could have written this or bits of it as a weird dystopian thing in 1989 and, and here it is do you ever have that well it thought? certainly feels like the last number of years that we are living in a very badly written dystopian science fiction novel that's oftentimes just real boring and but awful and 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 but definitely the sense of particularly remembering the utopian wired 90s utopian years about the internet you know we're 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 very, very far now into with with the, who was in the president most recently, you know, the last four years and that guy. crypto, everything. And yeah, we're deep into into the we're in the future now. We're living in it's, the future. We're in the the singularity is here. We're oh, in it. We're in it forever. It, it, it so <laughs> is. Uh, Black Mirror is another reference, uh, pop culture reference. I didn't listen yeah. there. We are total Black Mirror. Wobbly, I saw a bit of the rehearsals, and great, just a little clip. And to avoid being killed, when you fire, it will die. Just sit there shooting until you've killed about half the things. Then use the super zapper to kill what's left. After you've killed everything in this way, use the super zapper for the second time to kill the fuse ball. After you've gotten this final attacker, and you've killed everything else, you'll go on to the next screen, or you will be killed. You will not make it to the next screen. You will die. And I notice there's, um, uh, uh, you know, samples and sounds and things from the gaming world. Talk to us a little bit about 
how you went and gathered that. And, and also in your answer, talk to me about the Twitch connection because Twitch is the gamer universe. So tell me about how much of the gaming world you pulled into your samples and your devices. Well, uh, social media, when we tried to do the last record and we tried to come to uh, the history of how social media evolved, uh, essentially like all the technology of gaming was at the heart of it. You know, like they end up pioneering all this stuff five, 10 years uh, in advance. So at everybody over 45, when something like NFTs come along, it just seems like absolutely, it's hard to explain NFTs to anybody over 45. But anybody under 45, the lineage, Habbo Hotel, Second Life, uh, you know, these games pioneered in-app currency, the concept of buying an apartment, renting an apartment. So it was a simple matter for this show of just going back. And uh, uh, there are many documentaries, really wonderful, fan-made online 10 to 20 minute documentaries of people who grew up playing Habbo Hotel, people who grew up uh, you know, retiring from their day jobs to be landlords, flippers in Second Life. Mm. And PlayStation Home, you know, like Sony creating this incredible uh, liminal space where kids were supposed to hang out with each other just long enough to figure out what game they were going to play next. But instead, they end up spending all of their time in their apartments just hanging out in PlayStation Home. Mm. And, and previous to working on the show, I'd never heard of Habbo Hotel. Uh, Habbo Hotel has heard of you because it was also one of the primary spots for very early nascent online radicalization of the center. Uh, Habbo Hotel was where lots of people hanging out on 4chan would prank people by uh, taking these little avatars that would, uh, you know, black men in wearing suits forming swastikas Oof. to keep people out of the pool. Right. So one of, you know, in other words, a lot of the edgelord right wing or alt right radicalization of what 15 year olds find funny was pioneered on Habbo Hotel in 2006. Uh, I see. And it was just a preview of Gamergate and the, uh, the people who 10 years later were old enough to vote and uh, saw the appeal, found an appeal, found like minded brethren in Trump. Uh, so the history of all of this is actually, in many ways, it maps on pretty tightly onto what happened to our country over the last 15 years and why things like Trump became possible. And we're playing here at CPAC, we're playing, the stage we're playing on is where Trump accepted the Republican nomination at CPAC in 2016. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're literally we're on the we're, same yeah, stage. We're literally in the room where, where uh, you know, where Mitch McConnell and, and Pence and everybody's been. So it, it feels like we, yeah. we so, need to do some sort of a, 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 a cyber energetic exorcism before we play or something. This set, this set, that's what the set is. The set wrote itself. <laughs> no, it, it, so yeah. So, with, but just speaking to what John said, yes, the sense that, that, we're dealing with things that are specific things, but then the way that it also somehow maps on to some shifts in American culture, consciousness, technology, politics, all that, that's the kind of fertile, juicy, that's what makes it interesting, I think, for negative land, if, if it can kind of work at a number of different uh, levels. You know, that's always the stuff we always go for, so. And no. I think the show, we can, I think we can already tell with what we've got dialed in that we're, we'll re, if we do this in the future, we'll be revisiting it. There's things to rework and tweak and, you know, goose just to get it a little more dialed in about what we're saying there, you know, but it's, uh, hopefully they'll think we have it all figured out exactly when we perform. We'll fool them. Well, that's the goal. And again, to me, what's, what's so great about growing up, listening to Negative Land and, uh, got to see you once, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, there's a blur for me. Like, did they write this or are they reporting on this? You know, that's what's great is that you guys have always just lifted the lid on corporatism and ads and logos and all these things and, and uh, commodification. And it's, yeah, it's confusing because here we are and it's like, wait, did they make that line up or is that from... Well, Habba Hotel, thank you. I didn't know about it either, so I'm going to be studying it. I looked at it, uh, I'm seeing it here. I I've heard of similar things, so th this this is... Yeah, go, go to YouTube and type Habbo Hotel Pools Closed, and you will be okay. 
plunged into the mind of 15 year olds that 10 year late, 10 years later were 25. It's terrifying. Wow. All right. And well, <laughs> generally 10 years later, 15 year olds are 25 year olds. That's true. You've noticed that. Yeah. We've noticed We've been noticing that. Like magic. And so, so the, the Twitch connection is simply that this festival is streaming all of their shows on Twitch. So therefore we're on Twitch, but but for those of you who are much more sane than we are and are safe in your own homes, that's the way to enjoy the show, not here. This is too dangerous. This is crazy. <laughs> Being here, this is, this is just- it was, it was interesting how Twitch, the video game platform was the one that was best uh, positioned to take advantage of the pandemic. Like video gamers pioneered exactly what was necessary of a streaming platform. Yep. And so it started off as being game specific, but like after 2020, Twitch is just how people watch concerts, television, uh, yeah. hot tubbers. I I concur. Um, I, I love Twitch. I I, I I stream on it every every Monday. I do a, a podcast every Monday called Meatless Monday Meetups, and I do that. But yeah, I love Twitch. I get a couple young viewers, but I also I, I do some music on there, and the quality's great, as you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's really as you say for the first time in history, we can use the phrase "try this at home." Because we used to say <laughs> the opposite, right? But um, will people be able to watch this after tonight? It's going to stay up on the Twitch site? I think it will be saved in some way. Okay. That's what we'll, I'm pretty sure, yes, that okay. will happen. So let's hope to hell we, we don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> and will people watching later, you, you can go to, of yeah. course, negativeland.com, which we have under here. Um, yeah, but it's not, out, we don't have a link up to, I don't think we, we don't have a link to it at, at our website. Okay. No, you just have to go to, it's twitch.tv slash magfest, M-A-G-F-E-S-T. Mm -hmm. That's where it is. It's on, it's their, it's their stream, the magfest yep. stream. And I think they just plug us in at nine o'clock and we're doing our thing for an hour. Great. And uh, uh, yeah, it's a really interesting room to play in both because of the history of what's been in there and then it's the most ginormous it is the size of a football field so i've i've right. personally never played a room this big so sonically they they let us sound check kind of longer than they were letting other artists they were very to mean something to each other always with a satisfying beat so you're interested in beating those video games you want your quarters to go farther. Well, sit back and listen carefully. The secrets, techniques, and skills to master the play and to extend your playing time on all the latest and most popular video games are contained in this album. Conquer the video. It, and it helps to, you have to dial in your, your get your head around the room because there's a lot of delay. The low end is in, you know, if there's so much low end, we're having to kind of roll things off so it doesn't sound too muddy. Okay. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, it's it sounded pretty good up there, and uh, and uh, but we're super excited to. Well, how do we put it? We were always facing the other way when Sue's doing her visual, so we're super excited to see what she did after the show's over, and we right. get to back and watch. Yeah, okay. very excited. Okay, well, so yeah, that's we happening right now. Let's glance a little bit into the recent past. Of course, you've got two wonderful recent releases, the No Brain EP and The World Will Decide. Uh, and there's some videos that have been coming out. Uh, uh, you know, And Ryan, who, who made the, this concert film of ours, is, the, is who has edited and created the, the last, I think, four music videos, five? Ah, <laughs> oh, the, the production videos too, yeah, Ryan. Did she say hi? Fantastic. Oh, she said hi. Yes. Yeah, yes. Hey, Ryan. Why did you make this movie, Ryan? <laughs> well, as Mark said, um, you know, as they're doing things, it's a it's it's a lot of it is improvised, um, and Sue is playing along and reacting to it with her um uh software that she's built, and it's it's all it's as it's happening, and so is true and if the statement is false then there's no way we can ever show that the statement is either true or false there wasn't really a, a way for everybody to kind of see everything all together gelled and so i wanted to create a presentation just uh, a presentation of the live show like showing that it is live it's people performing, it's people improvising, 
it's, you know, it's not just, you know, hitting one button for one song, hitting another button for another song. Like it's very active. It's very uh, kinetic. And um, so that was the attempt. And uh, I think it was pretty successful. And so it's a split screen. It, it's, it's across multiple shows over multiple nights. And um, so they're different every night, but uh, it's following the same um, set uh, and story. So. Wow. No, it, it was sort of great, and I, I felt like I, I got to enjoy a, a lot more of what the show was about what, watching this. So, folks. Yeah, our feeling out. is that, that in, in Ryan's choice to have these multiple timelines happening, simultane, a simultaneity of, of the experience, it actually evokes something that I think is truer to what it's like to actually be there because your brain is more. It need, you're, if you're in a room with people, your brain's occupied in a certain way because there's so much coming in all, uh, around you 360 degrees. When you're watching a screen, by having a little bit more information coming in, I think it gets your it gets the brain activity activity up enough that it, it feels more like the actual being in our show. Most right? of what, what Sue you? most of what Sue does really is live animation. Like you can see her on stage manipulating these objects, and those hand movements are what's sort of fueling the movement behind you on the big screen. And so Ryan's film by going letterbox Panavision super widescreen and showing you two nights at once. It's even though it's a fixed media film, it really underlines how much she's improvising. She's improvising as much as we are. To you, is it climate change or is it making sure we're safe as a country? I think Let's formulate the question differently. What am I being frozen for? Now here's the sentence that you just heard. Dog. Now here's the sentence that you just heard. Or no dog. There is no planet. I've come to kill the baby. You, you do get that feeling. So it, it's it's normal for some things to come to your attention dot com. Uh, it, it, it just <laughs> flows off the tongue. So check that out, people. Yeah, it's um, real easy to type that one in. Try that at home, as we said earlier. Now, you've always. But it's on YouTube. It's 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 on YouTube. If you just go look up negative land, it's normal <laughs> or something, you know, the whole. You'll see her film there, yes. Absolutely, but yeah, yes. we're very excited about being, especially now when, when uh, given our current, our current endless, endless variants and pound variants moments uh, that we're living through, uh, it's okay. wonderful to have a something you can share with people that they can't see just when they're at home. Yeah. <laughs> variants of collapsing sociopath right wing attackers. Is that what you mean? Is that the I, I don't know. Yeah, the true. other one? The, yeah. Sorry. The virus. Yeah, a lot of yeah. there's a lot of var all kinds of variants you know there's variants on those yes um thank you ryan that's a great you know just really you know i understand a little bit more where that's coming from speaking of technology the group has always used what's new i mean you, you were tape splicing and sampling came along and drum machines and you've always moved well not exact but not exact no when sampling first came along we 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 borrowed one once for a couple of days but okay. we couldn't we, were, we couldn't afford them so for instance if you escape from noise there's a tiny bit of sample i think on the track quiet please there's some okay. percussion that sample percussion that was played at half speed so it comes back and that's why it's so fast and accurate right. but um other than that we couldn't afford it. So that I record see. is still all done by either playing instruments or just splicing tape, tape. with razor blades. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I would say that we, uh, we're, we're, we're more behind, I see. but we're, we're always embracing it and trying to figure out weird new things we can do with it, but, but we can't always afford, I don't know, but that's over the years though, I think we've caught up with that. And I don't yeah. know. I'm so, so, answer that now, but. I'll rephrase that then. You sampled sampling just a tiny, tiny bit, but you did more traditional tape splicing and, and, and found sound things. But um, uh, just to bring it to today, have you had any thoughts, especially since you're such a visual oriented band in performances? I, I don't have one. I don't really understand it. But 89 year old Don Preston's always tell me about it. This virtual reality stuff with the Oculus uh, shit, you know, headsets where you can see 360 and you can create these amazing worlds. Have you guys, is there something in your future for that? Because that's looks perfect for, because you create a different world with your stuff. Tell we're me hoping about Ryan is uh, able, we're, we're talking with Not Human, who uh, has a 360 degree projection uh, chamber called Cine Chamber. Mm. And uh, 
I don't know how that's going to go if it all lines up, but you know, there's a chance that Ryan's film might be adopted for 360 degrees. And also there are people that want to reformat Ryan's current film so that you can watch it. It's super widescreen already. So it sort of lends itself right. to VR watching. Lose yourself in wherever you're staring. What did, did you, you also have, uh, I think there's also like, you can still record here, which is about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But we're not doing it yet. Well, we'll, we'll see what happens. There's uh, Ryan's film opens the door to that, basically, yeah. 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 But I would say that when yeah when new technologies arise, we're interested in messing with them, not just for the sake of messing with them. It's only if we if we feel like we've got a good idea that can manifest in that medium in a way that plays to the medium. Sure. Then that in, that's way more interesting than just trying to translate what you're already doing into a new medium simply because it's the new medium. In 2015, I uh, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That tracks with many things yeah. you've done. Yeah. So if we get it, if we get some really interesting, funny idea of something to do with NFTs, then great. But if we oh, don't, God. if we don't, then, then no. we'll be right there to then stab no. you in the face with our no. Yeah. We're then, never, no. We are then never no. doing NFTs. No. <laughs> but you know, the, Wobbly, yeah. you were going to say, yeah. <laughs> With VR, one of the things that I really noticed, I, I was looking for work somehow in 2016 at several companies doing VR with those glasses that strap all the way over your face. And the thing, when you get into music and you meet music industry people or film industry people, often they're really detached from the process, but they all got into it because they liked music or they like film. In VR, nobody wants to be that idiot standing over in the corner looking like a fool with a you know huge helmet over their head, sort of like off level and stumbling around. Nobody right? wants to be the person <laughs> who is utterly, utterly subject. Like we're not talking about the audience anymore. The word, as far as the industry is concerned, is users. Mm. And there's a sort of built-in contempt for the people who design content for VR. The contempt is baked in with the experience of yeah. VR. Yeah. You don't want to be that person with that thing on your head. And so in terms of us like getting a little bit too deeply into making content for the medium, it needs we we really need AR or mixed media glasses before it's even going to be possible but you know what we try to do is to make art that draws attention to the artifice of the artifact that's like been strapped on we're trying to like wake your nervous system up to the way in which it's being manipulated so that you're not being manipulated because the contempt has been baked in <laughs> that's that's we can clip this part out, but that's an album title right there. The contempt yeah. has been baked in. That's our new slogan. <laughs> well, like it's it. just, you know, <laughs> I like well, I like David Tudor. I like Marianne Amache, you know, James Terrell, these visual or audio artists that sort of bring your perceptual mechanism to your own attention. Yeah. Uh, you know, like figure out the way the ear hears sound. Art that sort of like makes you self-conscious. Oh, that's the way my ear is hearing things. That's the way my eye is processing light. Sue's work by using difference framing and uh, emphasizing changes between difference mm. is in many ways a total metaphor for the way the human eye, you know, composites what it's seeing into one shape. Yeah. It's, uh, so like that is sort of what we're up against. We're trying to make art that draws attention to the frame. And most of what VR does is it's trying to trick your nervous system into thinking that you're having an experience and they want to own the experience that you're having. It's, it's a shell game. So we don't want to No, VR in and of itself is not interesting. It's the enemy. It's the, we don't want to own your experience. No, that, that makes sense. Uh, having said that, you all have taken many things that are the enemy and, uh, you know, repurposed and, and skewered them and satirized them. So let, let's let's see what happens there. So, well, I, kn I know you're short on time. I appreciate you coming on and, and, and um, I'll be watching tonight. And uh, people, again, negativeland.com uh, is a really great site, by the way, folks. If you don't know, o o Over the Edge Radio is also linked up there. And say something about that, because isn't that about 40 years of 
of, of it's, yes, it's, yes, it's, oh, geez, is that right? Wait a minute, it started in, in 41. It started in July, or Negative Land started, Over the Edge as we know it started in June or July of 1981. And uh, Don Joyce, the member of our group who's deceased, uh, oversaw it for 34 years. He passed the baton to Wobbly here uh, shortly before he died and, and, and who's continued doing it. And uh, yeah, it's our live sound collage improvised mixed radio show of which we, it's, it's part of why I think we've got, we've developed a lot of our skills about how to perform live and, and improvise the way we do is from all the uh, hours of doing radio. And also the, all the shows are always thematic, they still are. And so they inform, I mean, John was able to, Wobbly was able to test drive a bunch of the material for the show we're doing tonight on the radio show, a couple of episodes worth, which is just great makes for good radio, but then also you get to like test stuff out and figure it out. Anyway, there's 4,000 hours of, the, of 40 years of this radio show is on the internet archive. So you could probably, I think you can listen to one episode a day for, I don't know, three years or something. It's, Quite it, some time. There's a lot of there, yeah. So we gave it a catalog number when we released it. We just thought, yeah, it's our new album. It's, 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 it's 4,000 hours long and it's <laughs> That's free. Great. That, that's yeah. great. Well, I randomly go in and enjoy random years. So you I do can... too. Yeah, I can't. There's old shows where I don't remember. Like, oh, I, I that I was at, and I, like, I don't remember doing that. Oh my God, that was silly. Yeah, we definitely we, we had we had a lot of fun. The year, what happened was we found a guy in, in the the early '80s shows. We never recorded all of them because who knew there'd be a way to preserve them. Mm -hmm. but we found a couple of people who were fans at home who uh who who were recording the show in the end so they we got all kinds of shows we thought were permanently lost we, we were able to transfer them to cassette and put them up there with a fellow named tim maloney did all that work so god that's bless tim yes that's fantastic that's fantastic well um oh you know good good luck tonight good luck tonight this sounds yeah. amazing and um and is there, there's one more show, right? You're playing in- Oh yes, we're playing in Baltimore tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night at Saturday. the Metro Gallery. And I think what we've decided is instead of doing, we're gonna probably take the show we're doing tonight and just keep working on it for the next, at the next show too. Hey. You, kind of the you, plan. You, you, you remembered all those lyrics, use them again the next night. Oh that's wait, right. that's- Now you remember man. all those lyrics. <laughs> that's a, so oh, Saturday, January 8th, where is it? at the Metro Gallery in Baltimore, Maryland. So we're not on tour. We're just doing these two shows. And, uh, and Soft that's Pink it. Truth opening. Soft Pink Truth, who, who are absolutely worth coming out to see as well. That's I Drew, think. Drew Daniel of Matmos. Yeah, that's his oh, side, side. Would you call it a side project? What do you call it? Well, it's one of those side projects that keeps threatening to get bigger because yeah. he's, uh, every year he just gets more shamelessly and uh, self-indulgently into disco and house music and people love disco and house music so so that's what we're going to do yeah. okay because the that's... contempt is baked in uh, the drew the theme. well you know good but but folks... thank you for doing this and certainly yeah. we'll even if we we can post something post this uh when you're done or maybe the show's over but it'll be interesting to for have a link to the show and a link to this conversation absolutely and and That'd we invite awesome. you back to, yeah we invite you back anytime to make weird music uh when, when yeah. something new is coming up and hopefully um, i can see you in person soon because uh, that'd be really nice that'd be great mark i'll see you when you great. get back and wobbly see you next yeah. time on the west coast yeah and always a delight to chat with you andre great to meet ryan yeah. and uh thanks so much <laughs> <laughs> video awesome. games did not cause January 6th. They just saw it coming. <laughs> <laughs>